Hello folks, as always, Robert Sanchez, I'm here uh, from our office. It seems like I'm always here, I tell you, man, for 38 years of sitting around here, I'm always here, okay? On the same street, how about that, on the same street. Good Lord Almighty, time goes by. We've had a, quite a few requests to talk about the subject of bankruptcy and quite a few questions on that. And uh, you may say, Robert, what do you know about bankruptcy? A little bit. Had our assistants check through the courthouses that we've uh, filed cases in, and it looks like uh, we filed uh, between fifteen to 20,000 cases of bankruptcy. So I know a little bit about it. I know a little bit more than you, possibly, but a little bit, okay? You know, sometimes a little bit of knowledge is dangerous, but we do quite a few of those. So let's go slowly. Bankruptcy is divided in chapters. Chapter 7, chapter 9, chapter 11, chapter 12, chapter 13. Yeah, they could probably put on chapter 99 one the year. Who knows? But normally, we citizens here, down on the street, okay, normal mom and dads, we file chapter 7 to get rid of our debt and chapter 13 to reorganize our debt. And of course, I tell you, on a wintry day, there's nothing like Florida. It's so beautiful. That's where this show's from, from Florida. And we have the best bankruptcy laws and judges in the country, I think. <laughs> That's my opinion again, don't get in trouble. Don't get me in trouble. But chapter seven, you're allowed to keep your stuff and walk away from your debt. That's pretty simple. Let's say you have a million dollar house. You know, I use the word a million or two million a lot in the show. People say, oh, man, so many rich people. Uh, almost any house in Miami is worth a million bucks. Okay? If you're working at Walmart, you live in a half million dollar house, basically. Half a million. Because they're so crazy, the prices recently. I've never seen anything like this. I know, just to digress, which I always digress, but my mom and dad bought a house when I was born. They paid 2500 in New York City. I had a store where my father has a real estate office. We lived in the first apartment, my grandmother in the second apartment. $2,500, okay? Later on in life, my dad bought an eight family house in New York City for $20,000. Can you believe that? Now, we lived in Brooklyn Heights, or Cobble Hill if you wanna call it. And in that section of town, an apartment today is worth three or four million dollars. That means one of the floors is worth that. Boy, but that would kill to get some of those houses back because he had a lot of houses back then, okay? Anyway, talking about bankruptcy, the state of Florida, if you have a house after four years, no matter what the value is, you get to keep the house as long as your payment's up to date, you follow me? So if your house is worth a million, a half a million, or 10 million, we don't even count it. That's just homestead property. That's just called homestead property. This varies from state to state. You may want to move to Florida. Maybe go bankrupt one day, because we have great laws down here, I tell you. Another good state to go bankrupt one day, I'd say, is Texas. I don't know anything about Texas. It was pretty big. Okay, I've been there like 10 times. It's, every time I go, it's, I think it's getting bigger. I don't know. It's, people pouring in, it's still, it's empty. Texas is empty, okay? Because you just drive out of a city, maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> it looks like Texas, the old, the old fashioned West looks like, okay? So I'm a little jealous because I drive a half hour, I'm still in the city here because you can drive from here, Miami, way up to West Palm Beach. It's a continuous concrete and buildings everywhere. It's horrible. It's horrible for that. You know, I want to get out of the country. You can't find country here. You have to go way upstate. You have that three or four hours from here, you're in the country. But no more digressions. Let's stick with the bankruptcies. If you go bankrupt, you're allowed in Florida, keep your house. You get a thousand bucks for a car and you can keep some personal property. Now, I love when I tell people that, they go, oh, I have a brand new car. A thousand dollars in value. I know right now it's a little crazy because car values are going up like never before. But let's say, make it simple, you have a leased vehicle. I have a little gup because they're sending me messages. <sighs> Take a wait. Take a wait. I have messages flashing everywhere right here to tell you, man. Relax. Whew. But let's say in Florida you have your house. The value is unimportant to me. 
and you have a brand new lease car, whether it's a Chevy Volt, I don't think they made Chevy Volts, you know, a cheap Chevy, whatever it happens to be, Ford Escape, something inexpensive, a Honda Civic, whatever. Or you have a Mercedes or a Lamborghini, hey, let's go all the way. Porsche, Ferrari, and it's leased. Well, the question is then, do you have a thousand dollars worth of vehicle? Uh, no, no. A leased vehicle is not yours. Someone is lending it to you, the bank. But let's say your brother lent you a car. It's not your car, it's your brother's car. That's how you look at a lease vehicle. Is that yours? So it has no value, because you can't sell it. Send maybe to a chop shop and you get in trouble, it's a felony, so you don't do that kind of stuff. Barring criminal behavior, lease vehicle is not yours. And normally, if you have an automobile that you're financing, you owe more than it's worth, so it's worth nothing. Which is kind of crazy, because if you had a, a 10 year old pickup truck today, that could be worth like 10 or 15,000 bucks. Uh, then you're screwed because if your debts are 20,000 and your vehicle's worth 15,000, you gotta pay 14,000 to the court because you're overvalued. How about that, huh? That's kind of crazy. And we just ran across that because my daughter, I had uh, purchased her a, uh, a Honda Civic, it was, yeah, Honda Civic. I think 2019 Honda Civic. It was used, it had about 15,000 miles, so I purchased it. I gave it to her, parents listen up. She pays her own insurance, she was over 18, make sure they pay their own insurance, that's, that's important for a lawyer, all our kids pay their own insurance, okay? And a couple of days ago I was talking, I said, you know, your car, you think it's jinxed. Why don't you sell it? It's a good time to sell a vehicle, they're all really high. They gave her $15,000 for that car. Almost what I paid for it, okay? Three years ago. And she went and got herself a lease vehicle. Brand new, right? And uh, she put 3000 down, I think, or 2500 down, she told me last night. And the rest of the money she put in the bank. So she is like twelve five in the bank. No matter what happens, she can make the payments on the car. She has the money. I told you before, she's newly married. So they have money in the bank. They got a car. They're making the payments. And their insurance, because they were just recently married. They married on what? the Kings, uh, they... It's easy to remember their anniversary, right? I mean, forever. I'll know whether you get married. You know? <laughs> 17th of August, or what? anything, any holidays there, nothing. I, uh, this is an easy day. Christmas, Martin Luther King, Easter, whatever. Easy day to remember. So she was married recently. And I said, well, call your insurance company, which happened to be Geico. I'm not asking for be sponsored by anything like that. I have Geico anyway. So she calls him, and her insurance and his insurance combined, both of them went down $200 a month. It's a married couple with a brand new safe car. He's got an older car. Men always have the older car. And uh, so basically cars cost her 150 bucks a month. That's it. From last month to this month, payments are way down. So yeah, she's coming out way ahead there. And if you go bankrupt, you'll have to keep your home. Every state has different limit, how much you could have of equity, they say, right? Or how much time you have to wait to qualify to protect your home under state laws. But here it's four years, so that's incredible. After four years, your house is protected. Um, there's uh, lots of exceptions to the law, but in Florida, the typical person wanna go bankrupt, they can keep their home, they can keep their brand new lease vehicle or purchase vehicle because it has zero equity and a thousand dollars in personal property. Now, when it comes to personal property, I wanna tell you something, my father, uh, passed away some years ago. And my mother said, Robert, I want you to go into his room and uh, if you want to retrieve something, take something, you can. Nah, he just went to my dad. I walked into that room for the first time in my life. It was an empty, cold room, like a warehouse, a room I've ever been to in my life. It meant nothing to me. I saw a bed. I saw a dresser, I saw some personal effects, but really there was nothing there because my dad was missing and I love my dad. I loved him then, I love him more now. So, <laughs> it's a few years ago, okay? So I took three items at the end. I don't think I have one with me. Let me see if I have one with me. No? It's a whole
I took a small book that he used for real estate, which is a calculation table for uh, amortization schedule, yeah. I took a watch he had. Uh, he had that watch from, uh, you know, World War II, because he's a vet. And I took a comb. I think I could have left the comb. <laughs> Regardless, those are the three things I took. And what were they worth today financially? Nothing. To you, to you, they're worth nothing. To me, eh, they, have some, they have some value. Okay, so in Florida, you keep your home, you keep a car with $1,000 of value, and personal property is worth 1000 bucks. That's the, those are your usual exemptions. And folks, what I'm trying to tell you is that if you look at yourself with a cold, hard eye, your stuff isn't worth anything. Nine times out of ten. And if it is, just say you have $10,000 worth of stuff because you took a rap. $10,000 worth of stuff. Had it appraised. Here's your written appraisal, $10,000. Okay. We're going to have to pay the court everything above 1000 That's it. Now, let's just change it really quick, quick, quick. So I, I want to do a separate one for chapter 13, but it's just so intriguing. Because some time back, a man came here. He had a 1954 Corvette, basically disassembled in his garage. He's been restoring it for like 25 years, his wife said. That car has value. It may be worth more apart than together, right? It's not the original 53. It's a 54 Corvette. So let's say he had, a, he had a house and he had two lease vehicles and they meet all the exemptions, but he wants to keep that toy, which is fully paid for and fully apart. What if it get appraised? Let's say it came in at uh, $40,000. I'm just throwing a crazy number out there. Let's say he has $100,000 of debt. He'd have to pay the court the $40,000 to keep the toy or nothing and give it up. And he's in the process of getting that appraised right now because the debt is killing him. He's paying 3,500 a month. That's a lot of money. And between you and I, that's forever. The credit cards, they don't go away. Unless you go bankrupt, win lotto, or drop debt. So don't drop debt, don't pay him off, and please win lotto whenever you can. So bank, if you have any questions or comments, don't forget like, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. And we're here for you as always. Robert Sanchez, you have a great day. I'll see you soon.